In today's video, I will show you the best builds tier list in Once Human. Overall, I've gathered the top 10 most overpowered and popular builds, and we will rank them from worst to best. Recently, after the new update, bunch of weapons and builds got nerfed and buffed, so if you were wondering what is the new meta for both PvE and PvP, then this is the video for you. And when you watch the video and want to try any of these builds out, then click my link in the description to watch full build guides or just scroll through my channel and you will find every single build with the best setups. So if this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first S tier build and it is the Sniper Bingo build. This build is known as the Bullseye Setup, which revolves around the Bullseye Effect, which highlights marked targets, outlines them, and increases their vulnerability by plus 8% for 12 seconds. This build maximizes the damage output from weak spot hits, ensuring that each shot does insanely high damage. The AWS 338 Bingo Sniper Rifle, along with the Agent Armor Set, is set up to amplify enemy vulnerability and weak spot damage. Complementing this, the secondary weapon and melee options provide versatility, making this build lethal in long-range combat. The Agent Set is a powerhouse for the Sniper build, amplifying your precision and efficiency. It starts with a 10% reduction in headshot damage, making you tougher in a fight. The set also boosts weak spot damage by 10%, helping you make those critical shots count. So, overall, always pay attention to your surroundings while sniping. Look for high ground to get a better view of the battlefield. Use your environment to hide from enemies while you aim. And lastly, stay aware of enemy movements, which will help you to plan your shots better and avoid being spotted. Then, for the second S tier build, we have the Unstable Bomber. This build is all about making things explode with precision. This setup revolves around the Unstable Bomber effect, which triggers a powerful status damage blast with a radius of two meters, dealing significant blast damage that doesn't decay with distance. The primary weapon, KV SBR Little Jaws, equipped with the Bombardier Souvenir mod, keeps your magazine topped up for continuous fire. Your secondary, the AWS 338 Bullseye, is paired with Vulnerability Amplifier to soften up targets for even more explosive damage. But other players opt out of the sniper and instead choose the crossbow for even more increased damage. The idea is that we use the crossbow for starting damage buffs and to soften up the target, and then we use the SMG or pistol for massive amounts of damage. Armor and mods like Momentum Up and Delayed Blast are selected to ramp up fire rate and explosive power, turning each shot into a high damage event. The combination of Agent and Renegade gear ensures that your weak spot hits are devastating, while the Unstable Bomber skill adds an extra explosive punch, making this build a true powerhouse for those who love controlled chaos on the battlefield. So then, for one of the last S-tier builds, we have the Outer Space. If you want to deal high damage, Power Surge is the perfect weapon effect for you. Since it is a secondary damage instance that stacks on top of the regular weapon damage, it boosts the overall DPS a lot. And the best news is that it has no disadvantages at all. The Outer Space build maximizes shock and status damage through key weapon and armor choices. The MP7 Outer Space focuses on stacking power surge effects, while the secondary weapon enhances flame damage or vulnerability. Key armor pieces like the Gas Mask Hood, Mayfly Goggles, and the Shelterer Set boosts critical hit rate, fire rate, status damage, and PSI intensity. Then the face mod, Thunderclap, triggers Celestial Thundershock, which is a powerful attack after repeated power surge activations. So focusing on PSI intensity is important. Additional calibrations and consumables like the Whimsical Drink increase PSI intensity, and specific cradle overrides further enhance weapon performance and status effects, creating a high damage, status-focused build. And then for the last and final S-tier build, we have the new Doombringer setup. This setup was recently nerfed, but players already have found things that you need to change to make this build still very powerful and high damage. DBSG Doombringer is one of a kind shotgun Although you get from two to five bullets, each one of your shots will shoot even smaller fragments, 
that each do damage. And with the right mods and gear, like the Steady Precision, Tree Strike Precision, Precise Strike Precision, and many more, will buff our damage insanely high. The downside of this setup is the small magazine size and players having to be extremely close to the enemy to do optimal damage. This is the reason why players prefer to pair this shotgun up with a AR or like me, the Bingo Sniper Rifle. Because of our high damage mods, not only our shotgun will get insane numbers, but our sniper as well. So if you use the shotgun for close range and on weak spots, and then the sniper for medium to long range, then you will become unstoppable. Pairing a good deviant with our playstyle is as well very important. I like the Xeno Purifier. This deviant will automatically move and attack enemies while also when attacking, it can teleport to the target. This will also give us the same teleportation ability to use as a melee attack. Moving over to the first A tier build, and it is the Power Surge. A lot of players confuse the normal Power Surge build with the Outer Space setup. Both of them will use the Power Surge mod, but after that, they will use different gear and mods because the Outer Space build uses an MP7 and focuses on getting as high crit and damage numbers as possible. While the default Power Surge setup is mostly focused on maximizing the damage and proc rate of Power Surge while reducing slightly the power and range of your bullets, it is great for securement silo and monolith boss fights. It might not be able to one-shot other players in PvP, but its volume of fire is more than impressive. This setup will use the SOCR Outsider Assault Rifle. Although it doesn't have the same fire rate, its bullets hit way harder and the trigger rate increases every time you manage to get a critical hit. However, you can still boost the rate of fire by using the Deviation Expert and a Rapid Fire Calibration Blueprint. The perfect choice for a secondary weapon is the Recurve Crossbow since it makes your targets more vulnerable to damage and increases the critical hit rate. But if you don't like this weapon, you can opt for the DE-50 Wildfire. It has a 60% chance of inflicting bullseye, and you can get it at the Wish Machine as well. Then next up, we have the Frost Vortex build, which deserves to be placed right in the A tier. This build focuses on maximizing ice and Frost Vortex status effect. The KM Abyss Glance, or Jaws SMG, with Vortex Multiplier or Cryoblast, enhances frost effects. And the Frozen Northern Pike melee weapon with Frosty Blessing provides significant healing. As for armor, it will include the Frost Tactical Vest for generating ice spikes and shelterer pieces for boosting elemental and status damage through mods like Flame Resonance and Lingering Frost. Heavy Duty Shoes with Slow and Steady or Covered Advance further enhances melee and status damage. The KM Abyss Glance is the best primary weapon for the Frost Vortex build because it triggers the Frost Vortex effect, trapping enemies and dealing continuous frost damage. Its ability to frequently activate Frost Vortex and boost frost damage by 30% makes it a key weapon for maximizing the build's crowd control and elemental damage. As well as, the Frozen Northern Pike is perfect for the Frost Vortex build as it not only freezes enemies with impacts and heavy attacks, but also generates a Frost Vortex every four seconds, adding to the build's overall crowd control and damage. Additionally, attacking a target affected by Frost Vortex recovers 5% lost HP, providing a valuable healing mechanism, although it requires extra stamina. And then for the last and final A tier build, we have the Shrapnel. This build is designed to maximize damage with a focus on shrapnel effects from the SOCR, the Last Valor. Key features include using mods to enhance shrapnel damage and critical hits. The secondary weapon is equipped to support additional damage to marked targets. This build utilizes armor and accessories that boost critical damage, weapon damage, and shrapnel effects while also providing benefits based on damage taken. The Last Valor is the best weapon you can use for the shrapnel build because of its passive shrapnel effects, which upon hitting an enemy with a bullet deals 50% more damage. And finally, the Lone Wolf set synergizes well with the shrapnel build by increasing magazine capacity and critical hit potential. Its effects boost crit rate and damage, stacking crit damage up to 10 times, enhancing the build's burst damage and kill efficiency. 
This makes it perfect for maintaining high damage output and rapid kills. So then for the first B tier build, we have the Burn LMG. This burn build focuses on maximizing fire damage by leveraging status and elemental damage enhancements. The primary weapon options, KM Crank or KVD Boom Boom LMG, are set up with embers or flame resonance to boost burn effects. The armor pieces are chosen for their status and elemental damage boosts, particularly focusing on increasing PSI intensity and burn damage. This build aims to deal consistent and high burn damage by focusing on status and elemental damage boosts. The build also benefits from using a two or three piece heavy duty set for additional elemental damage perks and a two piece shelterer set for the same perk. If the shelterer set is unavailable, a two piece scout set can be used as an alternative as well. And then for the last B tier build, we have the Fast Gunner LMG. The Fast Gunner build is optimized for maximizing critical damage, addressing the challenge of hitting weak spots with an LMG. The primary weapon, MG4 Predator, with the shootout mod, provides a steady damage boost, while the secondary can be a sniper or AR. The armor setup focuses on enhancing fire rate, weapon damage, and crit rate with the Bastille Helmet, Oasis Mask, Falcon Gloves, Old Huntsman Boots, and Lone Wolf Jacket. Key mods like Blitzkrieg, Crit Amplifier, Deadshot, and Covered Advance further amplify the Fast Gunner effect and crit potential. The MG4 Predator is the heart of the Fast Gunner build, making your every shot count. With a 40% chance to trigger the Fast Gunner skill on each hit, your fire rate and attack stack up quickly. When those stacks hit a multiple of five, you get a brief burst of infinite ammo, allowing you to unload without worry. Plus, hitting the same target consecutively boosts your weapon damage by 2% per hit, up to 40%. And if you keep your magazine above 50%, you'll enjoy a hefty 40% attack bonus. And then for the last and final build, we have the Melee Ninja setup, and we will place it right in the C tier. Melee builds are often meticulously made because of the gameplay it gives. Unlike other builds, and as its name implies, melee relies on close-range combat similar to playing a hack-and-slash game. In the case of Once Human, it makes sense. You must do anything and everything to survive. A melee build also helps in clearing out mobs, but it may not be able to clear bosses. The high damage output of most melee weapons is a tempting proposition for those who want to try out this build. However, there is some reliance on critical hits and damage bonuses which can be obtained through mods. Although there isn't really a weapon dubbed as the best, there are some that are better than others. For example, the Stun Baton, equipped with some mods, can do a ton of damage, which makes it the best melee weapon in the current meta. But anyone can get by with a good long axe, or even a frozen tilapia. As for armor, it's recommended to get in set that boosts passive perks like damage reduction, physical armor, and anything else that would make your movement speed faster or survivability higher, and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or feedback, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you are doing that, please leave a like, subscribe, and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy. Peace.